Good afternoon and welcome to this planning committee being held on Wednesday the 3rd of November 2021. This meeting is being held remotely by the Microsoft Teams due to restrictions in relation to COVID-19. This meeting will be recorded and made available to view by the Council's website, except for discussions involving confidential or exempt items. Therefore, the images, audio of those individuals present and or speaking at planning committee will be publicly available to all via the recording on the Council's website at www.cafilli.gov.uk. Due to restrictions in relation to COVID-19, planning committee site visits have been suspended and this meeting will not be open to the press and general public. However, interested parties may make a request to attend remotely and speak in regard to any item on this agenda. Votes for this meeting will be taken by Microsoft Forms and when a vote is required, the form will appear and then members will be asked to click on the yes, no or abstain and then click on the submit button. I will now carry out a, a, a roll call for attendance. Please, can you announce yourself as present when I call out your name? To start with, uh, Councillor Adams. Present, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Aldworth. Present. Councillor Andrews. Present, Chair. Councillor Bevan. Present, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Davis. Present. Councillor Dix. Present. Councillor Fussell. Councillor Fussell. Councillor Goff has sent in his apology. Councillor Hardin. Present. Councillor Higgs has sent in an apology. Councillor Hussey. Present. Councillor Miles. Present. Councillor Ridgewell. Present, Chair. Uh, Councillor Simmons has sent in an apology. Councillor Taylor. Present, Chair. And of course, myself present. Thank you very much for that. Um, the, uh, I have three apologies. Um, that's Councillor Goff, Councillor Higgs and Councillor Simmons. Uh, I don't believe there are any more apologies. Uh, Councillor Fussell hasn't um, responded to my request as to whether or not he's present. OK, then we'll move on to declarations of interest. Uh, councillors and officers are reminded of their personal responsibility to declare any personal and or prejudicial interest in respect of any item of business on this agenda in accordance with the Local Government Act 2000, the Council's Constitution and the Code of Conduct for both councillors and officers. Uh, any of you wish to signal that you have a declaration? Um, and if so... Uh, Councillor Adams. Councillor Adams, yeah. you have your hand up. OK, thank you, Chair. Yes, um, it's in the record against this application that I declared an interest when it originally came to committee. Based this is, on this is the agenda item four, is it? It is, yes. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, sorry, Chair. Um, I have spoken to the monitoring officer, Mr. Tranter, earlier this week on whether, because this is now the reserve matters for that approved application, uh, I would need to carry on with that declaration of interest. And uh, his advice to me was probably I should, in as a matter of continuity from the whole process, um, I, I, I did actually suggest that because it was only reserved matters and the principle of development was now a historical matter, uh, I could perhaps comment and contribute to the meeting. His advice then was probably best to stay as the original declaration of interest uh, was deemed I was accept I accepted it that I needed not to not to contribute and left the meeting then. I don't know whether he would like to explain 
that to the committee that it, it needs to continue? Uh, Mr. Tranter, would you uh, like to answer that query? Yes, uh, certainly, uh, certainly, Chair. Um, Robert Tranter, Monitoring Officer and Head of Legal Services here at Kefili. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so Councillor Adams uh, is quite right. Uh, it's frankly irrelevant um, for the purposes of the Code of Conduct, whether or not this is an outline application or reserve matters application, the interest still stands. And the only possibility uh, for Councillor Adams would be whether uh, or if he had moved house, because um, uh, for members to be aware, Councillor Adams declared the interest because he lives quite close to the uh, site of the proposed development. Clearly, if he had moved house to somewhere far away, then the interest would, would no longer be relevant. He could take a part in the debate. But bearing in mind that the interest is still relevant to the application, uh, my advice would be for Councillor Adams to declare a personal and a prejudicial interest and therefore leave the meeting um, when this application is considered by the planning committee. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Tranter. Thank you, Chair. I did med say to Mr. Tranter when we spoke uh, earlier in the week that if that was going to remain the advice, that I would accept that, uh, unfortunately, once again, as the right thing to do. Thank you, Mr. Tranter. OK, um, the other hand I've got up is um, Councillor Brenda Miles. Thank you, Chair. It's um, personal and prejudicial interest in relation to item three on the agenda, the application from Gelli Gweltachel Farm. Mm -hmm. The reason being, um, as I've said in previous meetings, is because I've got a close family member involved in the same industry um, who might be perceived as a competitor of the applicants. OK, thank you, Councillor Miles. Um, and now, Councillor Ridgewell, you have your hand up as well. Yeah, um, thank you, Chair. Um, my circumstances are very similar to Councillor Adams, and given um, Mr. Tranter's advice on this, um, I will also um, declare a personal and prejudi prejudicial interest uh, when the uh, agenda item four comes up. Okay, so we have one interest in item three, one and two in item four. Okay, thank you for that, members. Um, we can now move on to agenda item three which is application number 20 stroke 0702 full, and it's the application relating to Gwelia Gwilt, Yuka Farm, Gethliger Road, Gethliger Hengoid. Um, it's on pages one to 36 of um, the reports that we have, and the case officer is Anthony Pine. Uh, Anthony, would you like to come in and start your presentation? Thank you, Chair. Can I just check you can hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you fine. Excellent, thank you. Um, coming up before you should be um, the slide presentation that will accompany. Has that come up on the screen, Chair? Yes, it has. Lovely, OK, thank you very much. Um, good evening, members and uh, speakers. This application is uh, for planning permission for quarrying operations and an extension to the quarry area, including new drainage systems and settlement ponds, landscaping buns and associated works, as well as a site restoration scheme at Getliogwelt Icha Farm uh, by Bryn Aggregates Limited. I will go through with members showing plans and photographs to explain the site and the works proposed to be carried out. Coming up before you should be a um, aerial pho photograph. And if I can get a virtual laser pointer. Um, so the aerial photograph up before you, you can see uh, Bryn Quarry, which is situated at Gethliogwelt Ica Farm, uh, which is a dairy farm. And in addition to this and the existing quarry, which I'm highlighting on the screen uh, at the moment. Uh, the applicants, other businesses include a waste recovery and uh, recycling facility and uh, also including an anaerobic digestion facility. In terms of the application site relative to the surrounding settlements, 
This can be broadly summarised as follows. Um, Gethlegair lies to the north, um, Penabryn uh, to the east. Um, there's also Trelewis to the west and Nelson to the southwest. Um, the principle of the development is considered acceptable, conforming to um, policy CW15 and minerals policies MN1 and CW23 within the adopted local development plan. As outlined in the committee report, the quarry uh, produces a high specification aggregate and it is considered that the proposal can be justified under National Planning Policy Wales and Minerals Technical Advice Note 1. Uh, the following slide coming up before you uh, gives a sort of gen general overview of uh, the, the proposal, particularly during the extraction phase. Um, the area in uh, blue or may come up slightly purple, depending on your screen, uh, which is broadly rectangular in nature, that is the existing um, quarry area. Now, it's proposed as part of this application to extend that quarry area. Um, by approximately uh, 131 metres. This is the area in yellow uh, to the north um, and round to, to the east. Um, it's obviously got a, a staggered boundary there in, uh, in green, but that's the, uh, the extended working area for um, proposed extraction in the extended quarry area. Um, you'll also note... Um, green areas uh, which represent landscaping buns um, with areas in brown indicate peat restoration areas. This um, plan is obviously showing um, the extraction phase. Um, so there will be further plans uh, showing the restoration of the site, which is also included within the application. So the this is quite a large site, it's quite a complex operation and the um, proposal does cover a significant period of time. Um, this slide gives a general overview of the uh, extension. This is the existing quarry area in the, the rectangle that I'm just highlighting. Uh, the extension extraction phases uh, has an anticipated programme of uh, 24 years, um, which is phased um, with a further seven years following cessation of extraction operations to restore the site. Um, as you'll note from this plan, the um, extraction in the extended quarry area would start broadly in the southeast corner with phase one, and then it would uh, broadly track round in an anti-clockwise direction uh, around the existing quarry area to finish at uh, phase six in the northwest. The next slide is an indication of the restoration phases of um, the proposal. Um, restoration of the site would be partly in tandem with the extraction period, but as I've mentioned before, would then continue uh, for an additional seven years after cessation of the extraction works. Chair, can you hear me? Yes, I can, yes. Apologies, I have had been having some technical problems with the work computer. Um, and so I'm currently on a backup machine, um, which is, uh, I've just enacted. If you can bear with me a second. Um, did you, where did I leave you? Was it uh, talking about restoration? Yes. Okay, if you can bear with me just one second. Um, I'm hoping that I bring the presentation back up to continue. This will hopefully work. 
uh, I will just refresh my screen and see if this uh, comes up. Can you um, just confirm you can see that, Chair? Yes, the, that's the proposed plans restoration restoration okay. phases. Yes, that's yes, on screen for the delay. Um, as I was speaking, and apologies if this covers uh, a point in time that you you saw me. Um, however, um, it's best that uh, you have the entire presentation. The restoration phases. Um, would, uh, as I've mentioned previously, um, continue for seven additional years after the end of the extraction period. Um, however, they would also be in tandem uh, with some of the extraction period. Uh, this slide indicates the restoration phases, which, as you can hopefully see, um, start within the existing quarry area and then track round, uh, they're labelled A uh, to G, in an anti-clockwise direction. Um, though members should note that the um, restoration phases are, are larger than the extraction phases, so the, uh, they, they encompass both the extended area and then a sort of sequential uh, restoration of the existing quarry as part of the phases. Um, so it would end up with the entire site um, being restored. Uh, if you can see the aquamarine slash um, blue areas, they are some surface water lagoons that are proposed to be um, created as part of the um, development. Hopefully coming up before you is the next slide. Uh, this is uh, an indication of the site uh, when restoration is complete. Um, the areas, as I mentioned before, peat, peatland is being created uh, and they that is in brown. You can see an additional area uh, towards the south and uh, the rest of the area is proposed to be landscaped with some woodland and some grassland and uh, as I mentioned, the surface water lagoons. Um, the following slide gives an indication um, which will become important when we look at the next slide, but this is um, some sections across the site just to give members an indication of how the site will change both um, during the proposed extraction and then on to the restoration and the final indication of the type of final land form that is proposed. Um, you can see two blue lines on the slide, hopefully. Uh, the section line which runs broadly um, from southwest to northeast is going to be the top section on the following slide. And the line which runs from the northwest to the southeast will be the bottom section on the following slide. Moving on to that slide, um, there are obviously some coloured lines on there. Just to explain what this uh, represents, the, the red lines on the section is the uh, approximate pre-extraction um, ground level. Um, the blue line is the proposed quarry extraction levels. Uh, on the top slide, I'm not sure whether you can see my cursor, um, there's a, there's an annotation about the existing quarry area, and then it is um, the blue line ducks down, which is into the proposed quarry extension area, which you can see goes slightly well, goes lower than the existing quarry area, as the the extraction um, would carry on in the phases, and the green line is the end result, if you like, of the um, restoration of the land. Um, the bottom uh, section includes uh, the one of the proposed lagoons. Uh, again, you can see the blue line where the, the uh, extraction would um, be undertaken and then restoration up to the green line, which is 
uh, broadly commensurate with the pre-extraction levels slightly exceeding in, in some areas. Um, and the, the pylons are those pylons that run broadly parallel to, to Penabryn, um, obviously at some distance from there. Um, just to note that in the deepest area of the uh, extended quarry extraction in the top section, um, that when uh, in terms of the extraction period would temporarily reduce ground levels um, at its deepest by uh, approximately 27 metres before obviously the restoration occurs, bringing it uh, broadly similar to the pre-extraction levels um, with, with some the screening buns there shown. Move on to some photographs just to give a kind of indication of the existing um, quarry and the uh, area for extension and then the surrounding settlements to give some context to members. Uh, these two photographs show um, the view into the existing quarry area with equipment uh, visible and some of the uh, existing uh, quarry area uh, further on that photograph. Um, so it is obviously a significant scheme at the moment and um, the proposal would extend that area uh, to the adjacent land, um, obviously including um, changes to the topography uh, temporarily, but significant changes um, with the future restoration um, to bring the ground level back up following the extraction um, of the mineral. And this is a, a view across um, to Gethlegare and the housing there across uh, the adjacent uh, sink is seen in the, the background and uh, the power lines uh, that uh, obviously were on the section and uh, appear on some of the plans and the view across to Penabryn. Um, so the application was advertised via a press notice, uh, site notices and neighbour notification letters. Uh, the application did have a significant response uh, from the local community, um, both with a, a significant level of, of objection. There, there was some level of support as well, um, but the, the responses are summarised in the officer report that to uh, highlight to members the uh, the kind of scale of response. Um, there was a petition opposing the proposal which had 496 signatures along with references made to an online permission on uh, the website change.org uh, which had 1116 signatories. Um, further representations received individual responses are detailed uh, in, in the office report. Um, there was a significant number of those including individual objections, uh, the community council, um, local members, and also uh, some degree of supporting uh, comments. The, the matters raised in the objections received is detailed in the officer report. Um, the main sort of planning, material planning concerns expressed can be summarized as uh, concerns in relation to dust and air quality, uh, noise, odor, um, vibration, uh, traffic impacts, impacts on, on wildlife. Um, th these matters are addressed in the officer report um, and the um, proposed quarrying works and extension ha have been considered in conjunction with consultees and um, it's considered that the impacts aren't uh, unacceptable and can be adequately controlled by um, planning conditions. I've I have some late correspondence that I'd like to bring members up to date with since the officer report was completed. Um, there's been several further representations in opposition to the application. Um, however, uh, it's not considered that these raise uh, any further material um, planning considerations to those objections summarized and addressed in the committee report. Um, there was a further represent, uh, sorry, there was a representation from um, Wayne David MP um, 
which has also been received um, just before committee. Uh, he objects to the application, uh, raising matters such as the impact on residents, including noise, dust, traffic issues and odour, distance of quarrying to residents, and the longevity of the quarrying impact and subsequent restoration work, uh, should it be approved. Um, he also raises uh, the issue of the uh, Natural Resources Wales uh, Bund investigation, which is um, considered in the officer report and uh, raises concern in relation to the conduct of the applicant's company. Um, however, the, it's felt these matters are addressed in the officer report. Um, Mr. David MP uh, concludes his representation um, by writing, for the reasons above set out, um, I would urge members of planning committee not to approve this application. There's also a, um, a further matter that I would like to bring to the attention of members. Um, yesterday, a letter was received from Welsh Government, um, which advises um, the planning authority uh, that Welsh ministers have been asked uh, to call in this application for their own determination. Um, they have issued a holding direction under the Town and Country Planning Development Management Procedure Wales Order 2012. The direction has been made um, to enable Welsh Government to give further consideration to whether or not the application should be referred to the Welsh ministers for their determination. The effect of this direction um, does not prevent the local planning authority from continuing to process the application, um, which is why it is being reported to planning committee today. If, however, members are minded to approve the application, then the direction prevents the local planning authority uh, from granting planning permission until such time as Welsh Government provides the local planning authority with their decision on whether the application is being called in for their determination. Uh, the direction does not prevent the local planning authority from refusing permission. One other matter I'd like to raise is um, further clarification has also been received in respect of um, Shingrid Road Bridge. Um, the Caerphilly County Borough Council uh, Transport Strategy and Development Control Section ha have advised that um, as far as they're aware, the bridge, um, which is under the control of Murtha Council, uh, is not currently uh, subject to a weight restriction um, as described in the officer report. Um, members may be aware of the temporary lights uh, at the bridge. Uh, our understanding is uh, they're in place uh, to facilitate investigations being carried out on the bridge um, to ascertain if any bridge repair and or strengthening is required. So just, um, just to clarify that uh, there is, as far as we're aware, no weight restriction in place. Um, and that, that's contrary to what was in the officer report. So apologies for that. Um, but that is the um, information as far as we have it at the moment. Um, to conclude, Chair, the, the application is recommended for approval um, as the principle of the development is, is deemed acceptable. Um, with the conditions uh, suggested to be imposed will have an acceptable impact on the amenity of surrounding residential properties and the character of the area. Um, what I would say is noting the requirements of the Welsh Government holding direction, um, members are advised that should they be minded to approve uh, the application, then it would first be subject to the decision of Welsh Government in respect of their holding direction for call-in. Um, then following that decision, and in the event that the application were not to be called in by Welsh ministers, um, the recommendation is that the application would be um, deferred, as in the recommendation in the officer report, to allow the applicants to enter into a legal agreement 
and on completion of that agreement, the planning permission be granted um, subject to the conditions contained within the officer report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Pine. Uh, Councillor Dix, I noticed that your hand is up. I mean, the procedure we're going to follow through now is that we're going to hear from the objectors and then from the agent, and then we'll come into the debate afterwards. So any clarification that you might want on anything that's already been said can be raised at that time during the meeting. Okay. okay thanks, um, so, okay, so yeah. we, we'll, we'll now move on to the presentations. Uh, from the objector and uh, Mr. Phil Williams, I believe, um, if you could come in, put your camera on. It's on. Thank you. Um, and your speaker is you. You, you know the, the the usual routine that we follow. You're allowed I five minutes. Um, I understand that um, uh, you you may have a bit of a health issue that may cause you to delay uh, your presentation. We will take that into account and and allow you. Whatever Thank necessary you, time you you need to complete. Yeah. So I, I whenever you of, wish I have to a start. glass of water by the side of me, and the the, the uh, booster jab I had in Pont Saint Fly Leisure Centre okay. might okay. be the reason why I'm a bit short um, short to breath. But um, I'll try and get through within the time frame as as best I can. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you, Chair. And I'm speaking on behalf of the residents group and. I remind your committee of the, the overwhelming opposition to the proposal, a petition exceeding 1,100 signatures and over 100 separate objections. Um, in, in my experience of over 40 years in local government, it's important to look closely at what the report and advice is in front of committees, and that applies particularly to your committee today. There is a clear and undisputed planning history of this site, which demonstrates that previous planning permissions have not been complied with. Section 59 notices against the operators have been uh, served and the council has been unable to ensure its planning conditions have been properly monitored. In short, Chair, I believe the site is in free fall and currently attempts have been made to regularise unauthorised activity as well as seek planning consent to expand the operation until 2053 that is 32 years into the future, Chair. The local member will speak later regarding the impact of current activity on site and its significant detrimental impact on the locality in terms of noise, smell, vibration, dust, other health issues and in environmental terms. But if I can turn to the technical planning elements of the scheme, Chair, I, I'm, I'm reluctant to criticise the officer's report your offices often provide objective, informed advice to your committee, and I've seen that on many occasions. But in this case, the report, I believe, is inadequate. It's somewhat confusing and it lacks thoroughness. It doesn't help that it's not page numbered or paragraph numbered, so therefore I can't direct you to any specific element of the report. It doesn't clearly spell out what are comments from consultees, the content of the environmental statement appears to be missing, or indeed the analysis by officers. And the case officer has just presented to you without any reference to the special landscape area or the green wedge designation. And there's scant regard for it in the report. In addition, this is supposedly uh, subject to a, a section 106 agreement and somewhere in the document, the report, there's a reference to 106, but no details as to what the content of that 106 is or what its purpose is. In addition, the number of pre-commencement conditions or those requiring details to be submitted within three months demonstrates to me that you don't have sufficient information in front of you to make an informed, unchallengeable decision. You have no detailed information, for example, on a hydrological and groundwater monitoring strategy that's shown in condition six, a reptile strategy, condition seven, a drainage scheme, condition three, even though new drainage systems is part of the description of development. You haven't got the details in front of you. A topographic survey, condition 12, and this is a full application, as I'm sure you're aware, and yet you don't know the final landform or its impact on the landscape. Other conditions uh, which are pre-commencement or needed within three months, a detailed planting plan, a phasing plan, 
details of landscaping maintenance and one very important one that stands out, condition 27, a scheme for off-site dust monitoring. Now you'll know that the local community have been at pains to say uh, about the impact of a number of environmental issues, including dust monitoring. And yet you've been asked to grant consent by your offices today and to impose a condition which deals with off-site monitoring once the consent has gone. This lack of critical information, in my view, demonstrates you cannot responsibly determine this application other than to refuse it on inadequate information and the current impact to residents of the operations on site. Now, the agent acting for the developers will no doubt tell you of the national need for aggregates and the mitigation needs uh, that will be put in place to minimise the impact on residential and environmental amenity. But in my view, the protection of amenity overrides the mineral need. This is a question of, of balance, Chair. Please remember, Chair, the track record of the developer. Please remember the justifiable complaints from local communities. And please remember the monumental and far reaching decision you will take today if you follow officers' recommendations. Remember also that any condition attached to any planning permission can be appealed against, which further reduces the level of control <coughs> imposed by a local planning authority. So in conclusion, Chair, professionally, logically and morally, I believe you have no alternative and should vote to refuse planning permission. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr Williams, and, and well within time too. Um, and now we move to the second objector, who is uh, Councillor Bazina. Councillor Bazina, can you switch on your camera? Councillor, uh, Mr Williams, that's, thank you, Mr Williams. I was going to ask you to switch yours off. Uh, you, you also understand uh, the procedure, I'm quite sure, Councillor Bazina. You're entitled to five minutes um, and you can start whenever you wish. And I'll remind you towards the end if you're getting near your time limit. OK. So, so thank you, Chair and members, for giving me the opportunity tonight to speak on behalf of the St. Caduc Ward members and also the residents of Gethiger, Penabryn and the communities that surround this quarry. We've also had the support, as highlighted, uh, from our Assembly member, Kevin David, and also Wayne David, our Member of Parliament. I will outline in the statement tonight the reasons for refusal, but before I do so, I want members to understand the implications of this proposed planning and the impact it's going to have on the community, environment and our future generations. The consequences of the disturbances have impacted on the health and well-being of people living in the village, along with the homes and damage by vibration from the current blasting. The proposed development will move the area of quarry and activity to within 300 metres of current housing with a severe detriment to residents. Also, I need to bring to your attention that residents have no confidence when it comes to logging complaints regarding all the issues surrounding Bring Group. The local residents have tried to complain about the logging process to the council, but are unable to collate the number of potential complaints they have received. Also, the local school have spoken up and have expressed concerns regarding the possibility of the expansion regarding the no, um, no, not nose, noise and the dust close by to the quarry. So again, as I provide you with my statement this evening, you'll see in the press uh, that the world leaders are attending the COP23, at COP, COP26 conference. And this is the last thing the council should be doing when we are witnessing the devastating impact on our communities, but also our future generations to come. So what was once a lovely idyllic village has now turned into an expansion of an industrial mess encroaching on our community and expanding closer to residents homes. Residents have put up with decades of disturbance from the quarry and other, and, and other operations on site. I remember as a child visiting the village when my auntie Kathleen was alive. I remember the beautiful landscapes. It was a change to visit the countryside from living in the city, but not anymore. 
So tonight, members, I'd like to outline the reasons for refusal. The developer's track record of compliance with existing planning consents is very poor and subject to many complaints, along with major concerns around the controls of the current operations at the quarry and the multiple activities taking place on site. The quarry is not currently well managed. The council is fully aware of the numerous complaints made by the ward members and residents over the years. And also, you'll be acutely aware that the developers have already been served with a Section 55 notice, Section, Section 55, 59 notice, and admitted breaches. The residents and ward members have repeatedly provided the council and other agencies with evidence of continuing unauthorised activity on site for many months and years. Residents are not wrong regarding their concerns, objections regarding the vibration, the smell, the dust and the general disturbance. To say otherwise is an insult to their integrity. The proposed extension will add more fuel to the fire and create more dust and pollution. The planning considerations raised by residents have not been given adequate weight in the recommendation in the officer's report and we strongly disagree and believe that the authority does not have the officer capacity to ensure planning conditions are complied with. The site is also within a special landscape area and within a green wedge. So clearly the officer's report to committee is wrong in attributing that the weight to national interests and rise over the local and the environmental interests. This will have major issues affecting the health and well-being of our current but also our future generations to come in Caerphilly. If planning permission is granted today, the committee has failed to secure the necessary information in order to make an informed decision. The committee can refuse planning permission given that most of the recommendation, recommended conditions are pre-commencement of requiring information within three months of any approval which demonstrates how little information the council currently has in its, in its possession today. So finally, members, if this application gets agreed tonight, residents will face the prospect of having to suffer the effects of the activity at this quarry for over another 20 years. I ask you all tonight to weigh up the arguments for and against this proposal really carefully and urge you all to listen to the concerns of us as ward members and the residents who have suffered years of hell. Please refuse this application. Microphone is off, uh, Chairman. Sorry about that. I, I'm obviously talking to myself. I, I, I did want to thank um, both the, the objectors for their presentation. And now to move on to the presentation from the agent, Mr. Roberts. Um, you've obviously overheard what I've said previously in terms of time. You've got five minutes to make your presentation and towards the end, if you look as if you're exceeding that time, I will give you a gentle reminder. OK, Mr. Roberts, um, whenever you wish to start. Thank you, Chair. This application seeks to extend the existing quarry in order to provide much needed high quality sandstone. The Council's land bank of mineral reserves doesn't differentiate between the quality of reserves although the report before you does confirm the acute need for this high quality and scarce material to service building and infrastructure projects within Caerphilly and beyond. National planning policy supports the extension of existing quarries in circumstances such as this, where there is an acute need for the product. The proposed extraction area falls within the adopted LDP mineral buffer zone. No extraction is proposed within the adjacent green wedge or sink in accordance with the LDP. The scheme has been designed to exceed the minimum recommended separation distances to nearest properties as set out within the LDP and national policy in order to safeguard amenity standards. The quarry operations complement and underpin the other established operations at the site, including the waste transfer station, 
green waste facility and a D facility. The proposals also include landscape buffers, the majority of which have already been approved by this committee, together with ecological enhancement and mitigation, which will deliver betterment in respect of the adjacent sink. The application was submitted over a year ago with a comprehensive and detailed environmental impact assessment and a suite of technical surveys and assessments. The application has been fully scrutinised and assessed by consultees over this period. The report before you is thorough, comprehensive, and it sets out a package of 31 conditions and also a legal agreement to control and monitor the development to ensure there is no intensification of use compared to the long-standing operations. My client knows that some of the neighbouring residents are concerned about the operations and the perceived impact on property and health. That is why they have taken significant steps to engage with neighbouring communities to make them aware of how they operate, the steps they take to minimise the impact and to share with them the facts and data that should give them reassurance. My client participates fully with the council run discussion group, along with representatives from Public Health Wales, Natural Resources Wales and the Council's Environmental Health and Planning Departments. Reports from all these agencies are shared with elected members and residents who attend the group so that there is full transparency and accountability. The applicant continues to publish information and data on their social media channels, both proactively and in response to concerns raised by the community. The applicant has undertaken a series of information graphics and blogs aimed at giving residents the facts about this information, including confirming opening hours, wheel wash arrangements, blasting, the bend, environmental monitoring, export tonnages and conservation work on the sink. This information has been published on the applicant's social media accounts and shared with the local villages, including a hand-delivered leaflet to all residents of Gethigare and Penabrin. The applicant is not ignoring the concerns of residents, but has gone above and beyond to reassure and communicate with neighbours. The applicant already has a 24-7 dust monitor up and running with live data available for all to see on their web page. The applicant will continue to engage with the discussion group once it is restarted. In terms of the previous speakers, it is entirely appropriate for this committee to impose conditions. The package of conditions and legal agreement is thorough and comprehensive. All information has been provided through the environmental impact assessment and associated surveys and uh, uh, assessments. The con conditions are proposed to monitor and control operations for this authority to enforce and police. Any changes or any further work will be subject to separate applications and full control by this committee. To conclude, the application before you is much needed. It has been thoroughly assessed and scrutinised with no sustained objections from statutory consultees, including NRW, HSC, with the Office's Environmental Health, Highways, Drainage, Conservation, Ecology and Landscaping officers, the latter of which have fully considered and assessed the impact upon the SLA. Moreover, it will retain existing jobs and create new high skilled jobs for local people over the long term. We endorse the officer's recommendation, which is thorough, considered and entirely legitimate and appropriate, and respectfully request you to grant planning consent for this development, which is in full accordance with the development plan, subject to that confirmation from the Welsh Government that the planning officer mentioned earlier, and also subject to the comprehensive pack package of conditions and legal agreement proposed. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Um, now, members, um, you've heard the detail of the application from a planner officer, as well as the representations from the objectors and the representative from the Brin Group. Um, this is possibly the most controversial and emotive application that's come before this committee since I've been appointed as chair. And as chair, I'm extremely respectful of the grievances and concerns of residents. There's no doubt that if any member of this committee lived in the proximity of the development, they would be expressing similar concerns. However, we must not be led by emotion. If we're going to make a decision on this application, it must be on the facts of the application and the planning issues that justify acceptance or rejection. I expect this application to result in a lengthy debate and I request that members are brief in presenting their questions and observations. However, I will not curtail debate and I will provide members more than one opportunity to speak if they want further clarity on any issue. 
I want every member to feel that they have been given the opportunity to fully justify their decision at the end of this debate. Um, with that, um, I can see that there are already two members that wish to participate in debate, um, and uh, the debate, debate is now open. Councillor Dix, you, you have your hand up first. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I just want to point a um, clarification on um, with the sort of uh, WAG getting involved now and calling in this decision. Is there, I, I, I've got sort of doubts whether we should be hearing this tonight at all because, well, you know, if we decide um, to pass this tonight, nothing can happen on the ground because of, uh, WAG has got to decide their take on this. So I just feel that is it really necessary to be here this tonight at all because of WAG's uh, last minute sort of. Um, um decision to call this in um uh, ryan you have your hand up on that perhaps you can give some clarity on this Th thank you chair um because next this uh it's not unusual i think for for um and their provisions in the legislation for west government to issue a um a direction it just means that uh, I mean, they, they need to be um, aware of our recommendation. So it's it's important that we do consider, um, or our resolution rather, as an authority, it's important that we do consider the application. They will then um, take a view as to whether or not they wish to call in the application uh, for, uh, for, for consideration by the minister. Um, they have a set of criteria which they will apply when they do that, but they will be informed by the outcome of this meeting should should plan commission should we resolve to grant plan commission so procedurally um it's not unusual for such directions to be issued uh, across wales um and uh, th there is no issue whatsoever with um considering the application uh, tonight by by committee and indeed the, the that that direction shouldn't influence our, our consideration of the application either. So its merits, we should consider the application on its planning merits. Um, it's just a procedural, procedural matter in that Welsh Government will then consider whether they wish it to be um, called in uh, at a later date. So uh, it shouldn't influence you tonight. OK, thanks for that, Ryan. Thanks, Chair. Right, thanks. We will now move on to uh, Councillor Adams. You have your hand up and then Councillor Mike Davis. Thank you, Chair. Um, I wasn't going to make the same point that uh, Nigel just made, but it is one that uh, obviously we, we will wonder about. Um, what I was concerned about, firstly, is that uh, Mr Roberts has just confirmed that this uh, application has been live, in a way, uh, with officers for over a year. And yet, as we've been re reminded again by uh, two of the local members, there are I think it's 12 of the 31 conditions have been subjected to being answered within three months of approval. Uh, I wonder whether that would be three months of actually starting work so they can start to do any measurements of, of it all. Uh, and why haven't we had that kind of information available to us during the last 12 months as they've been trying to approve and get this application uh, to a state where we can really very accurately look at it tonight. Uh, another point, of course, is uh, we are told that this grade of, uh, of sandstone is really highly averse to slippage and very, very uh, useful on our motorways and airport runways. <clears throat> now, the Welsh Government have just, of course, told us uh, all of Wales, you can stop building any new high-speed roads. Uh, so where will we need in Wales this kind of uh, sandstone grit? Uh, and also in Parliament today, uh, the Prime Minister mentioned uh, he doesn't know when ever Heathrow might need approval or get approval for a third runway. So will they be needing this kind of sandstone as well? So it, it's something for us to, to conjecture on, I think. Thanks, Chair. OK, thank you, Councillor Adams. Councillor Mike Davis. Thank you, Chair. Um, just for clarity, really, it was mentioned by uh, an earlier uh, speaker uh, with regard to the 106 agreements and 
uh, how open it was. And I wonder if we could have uh, clarity uh, of the officers of what a 106 agreement is and why it isn't already uh, in place prior to this uh, meeting. As uh, obviously, uh, to me, it feels that the application isn't complete. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Can an officer come back on this, please, for clarity? Uh, Mr. Pine. Thank you, Chair. Um, in relation to um, Section 106 agreements, they are only ever um, sort of agreed um, sort of just prior to, to issuing in, in terms of, of signing a legal agreement. Um, in, in this instance, um, it's an anticipated that the Section 106 agreement would um, contain um, financial agreement for sort of the longer term maintenance of um, landscaping and things like that. Um, so it would be something subject to discussion, um, you know, following a, a resolution, but um, it, it's not unusual practice for it to occur um, after, um, you know, the resolution to um, grant an application. Thank you, Mr. Pine. Um, does that answer your question, Councillor Davis? You happy with the response? Well, I, you've answered it, but I find it's very, very grey area. So I can't say that I'm totally happy with it. No, okay. but uh, I understand what he says. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Councillor Davis. Uh, Councillor Dix, you wanted to come back in. Yes, please, Chair. I was just picking up on one of the um, speakers um, uh, against the application uh, when they mentioned that um, the council had they've been lots of complaints to the council about um, the site in the past, the current uh, size of it, and think operations are there, um, which are allegedly in breach of planning and consent, and the council's inability to monitor the site adequately. Um, as the speaker uh, raised that concern, now obviously. Um, I just wondered going forward, I know that over the last couple of years, the planning department has been greatly reduced. That was a political decision made by the ruling group to reduce the, the members who work in there and the staff, et cetera. Obviously that has consequences, um, but going forward, I was just thinking, do we now have the capacity to ensure that we can monitor the site going forward? Mr. Thomas, you're going to answer that query? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, I, I mean, I don't think we have any outstanding uh, formal enforcement complaints relating to this site. Um, we get a, we get a lot of um, a lot of complaints raised day-to-day uh, uh, -day issues, but there are no outstanding, uh, you know, uh, planning enforcement issues as far as I'm I'm aware related to the site at the moment. We do, um, for example regularly monitor blasting at the site. Um, we, there are, um, you know, cl clear sort of monitoring processes in place. Um, and I don't consider that would be uh, an issue moving forward. Um, as I say, uh, there are lots of conditions on this, this permission. As far as I'm aware, there none have been breached at this moment in time relating to the quarry. There are lots of activities on site. You have the farm, you have the anaerobic digester, recycling plant, and the quarry. Um, as far as the quarry is concerned, um, there are there are no impacts at the moment which which would justify any any enforcement action from the planning authority. Okay, okay, thanks. I was just wondering, do we now have the capacity within the department currently to monitor the site going forward? In, in, in a more uh, rigorous than we have in the past and we've got more staff now to deal with this we do have more staff yeah uh, um we uh, we've recruited quite um uh, quite heavily during uh, uh during the last six to twelve months um so we have staff in place but uh you know enforcement complaints are always done on a priority basis uh and clearly if there are um activities on the site which which um which are a priority in terms of the impacts upon the environment or on the local community then they will be prioritized regardless of of the resources that we have to have to hand 
Thanks for that, Ryan. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Thomas. Uh, Colin Powell has always also got his hand up. Um, may, may want to come back on this. Colin? Uh, yeah, just to expand very quickly on what Ryan has said, um, because of the you know the issues surrounding this site, uh, Bryn, Bryn Quarry and the wider site has always, always been given higher priority in terms of enforcement. Um, and as, as Ryan has suggested, you know, we, we monitored every single blast that goes on at that site. Um, the issue that residents may have is that um, we monitor them and the results come back as being within acceptable levels. Now that may equate to residents as being that we're not actually monitoring or that we, we don't actually investigate the complaints as thoroughly as we can do. But I can assure you that in respect of this site, irrespective of what staff we've had over the last uh, two or three years, uh, we have always endeavoured to monitor this site as rigorously as we can because we are aware of the sensitivities of, of surrounding it. So, um, and as Ryan has said, we've, we've uh, sort of uh, increased staff significantly over the last sort of uh, 12 months. Uh, and we are in a, in a position now where we can monitor this site satisfactorily in terms of the conditions we're suggesting in this application. Thank you, Colin. Um, um, Mike Davis, you still got your hand up. I, I assume that's your, an old hand, yes? Um, yeah, sorry, Chair. It, it is, yeah, okay. I, I'm going to move on now then to uh, Councillor John Ridgewell. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, uh, an interesting conundrum that we face here. Um, and I'm mindful, Chair, that you, you mentioned that we should make our decision on the facts. And I certainly agree with that. Um, because one of the key facts to this is that this company has systematically over years and years and years adopted a kind of mission creep um, on a monumental scale and this is another example of precisely that um, and while i hear uh, our officers and i and i absolutely understand our officers saying that the, on each of these occasions they meet the criteria and, and clearly they do and in terms of monitoring they may well meet the individual criteria in terms of noise or dust or pollution the cumulative effect of this, of this expansion, of this development, is having a massive effect on everybody that lives within the vicinity. Everyone that lives within the vicinity. And tonight, now we're being asked to subject everybody there to over 20 years more of this going on. 20 years. Now, I can't recall how many uh, planning applications have come through from uh, this, this, this organisation, this company, uh, since I've been sitting on the planning committees and since I've been an elected member, but a number. But looking back, as I have done in the past, um, there is a persistence with the planning applications on a regular, regular basis. And given we're now looking at something like another 20 years worth of, of, of uh, noise, dust and discomfort for everybody, it seems to me the likelihood on their track record is we'll have something like about 40 or 50 more planning applications coming through in that period. Each one will be asking everybody to accept even more expansion, more dust, more noise, more pollution, more discomfort, and each one will have an adverse effect on the residents. And what deeply concerns me is that throughout our planning process and this planning process in particular, the residents' views fall lower and lower and lower down the priority order. Ultimately, we have plans in place which, which allow these things to happen. And I find that a very regrettable situation. And I've listened hard to, to Mr. Williams' point, and, and I've listened to uh, Councillor Pazina's point, and I also listened very much to, to the, uh, the points from uh, Mark, Mark Roberts. Um, I want to hear a bit more of the debate. I haven't made a decision finally, um, but I am deeply, deeply concerned about this. Um, I'm pleased that, in fact, it will be going regardless of, well, I mean, if we if we if we turn it down, it, it doesn't go to Welsh Government, but, I, but I'm pleased that there is a calling on this. Um, because I think for a lot of us on the planning committee, there is a sense of impotency when it comes to these decisions, an inability to really be able to change things in the way we would like to as representatives of our community. So I'll leave it at that point there. It's not so many questions so much as a statement, um, but I might well come back um, if, if I may chair at a later stage. OK, thank you, Councillor Rich. Well, um, I've got uh, two other speakers with their hands up at the moment, councillors John Taylor and then councillor Adams. So, councillor John Taylor. 
Thank you, Chair. Yes, I've, I've got a lot of concerns about this application and following on from what Councillor Ridgewell said, it seems as if there's a, almost a conveyor belt of planning applications from uh, from this group. Um, every few months there seems to be another one coming along and it, I'm worried about the cumulative effects and I'm also concerned about um, extending this quarry any, any nearer to Gellegair and Penabryn. I think that could be very detrimental to the to the uh, amenity of, amenities of the residents and so I have a great, great deal of concern about this application, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Um, Councillor Mike Adams. Thank you, Chair. Uh, one thing I, I think I'd like to refute Councillor Dix's uh, connotation that uh, the ruling group caused the lack of numbers in the planning department. It was something that evolved as in other departments, we weren't recruiting as often as we perhaps would have liked. Uh, that's certainly been uh, subject to change this last few months. Uh, and I've gladly been uh, the uh, the benefactor of that with some enforcement decisions uh, that I now have uh, and I'm able to put back to uh, some of the complainants. Um, not, the, not the answer I wanted. But also then on the last uh, point, um, whether or not whatever decision we take tonight, one, will make it go back to Welsh Government. The opposite would stop that. I don't think so. I think whichever decision we make tonight, Welsh Government still want to have their say in this matter. And I'm I'm sure Mr Thomas can uh, can let me know if that's a correct assumption. It's, I, I don't think it's that they might want to. It's whether they choose to um, is, is the statement. But perhaps uh, Ryan can clarify just to be certain. Ryan. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, the call in direction. If if the committee um, resolved the grant planning commission uh, tonight, uh, then we would refer the matter to the Welsh Government and they, they would um, then decide whether or not they wish to call in the application, which would then be considered by the Minister um, via what, what the, the, the planning inspector as, as was. Uh, sorry, I've, I've Forgot, got the new name has changed the last couple of weeks. Um, if it's refused, um, it's likely to be appeal, and then it will still go go before um, the planning yeah. the, the, the planning inspector um, uh, and possibly the minister. So I think uh, either way, um, yeah. there will be involvement from Welsh government following this yeah. uh, this meeting. An appeal okay. on refusal would be my uh, assumption as well. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. Um, Councillor John Bevan, I see you've got your hand up next. Councillor Bevan. Thank you, Chair. I started listening to the debate. The only thing we have haven't considered is the people of Gethlinger. They have suffered long enough from different things from this company in the farm and everything else. It's time that somebody else put the boot in, no, not put the boot in, but made the decision that they cannot have plan, a plant mission, Chairman. And I'm quite prepared to, to move now that we refuse plant mission to this application. OK, as so you move that, we haven't had a second to that, but um, I still got a number of speakers. Somebody may want to come in on that later. Um, Councillor John Ridgewell. Apologies, Chair, it's a legacy hand. I should have put okay. that down. Um, Councillor Dix. Yeah, uh, sorry, Chair. I just um, had to come back on Councillor Adams. I was just, uh, for, sorry, I'm sorry if I've upset him, um, but all I was saying was it's a political decision um, that we make as councillors, a ruling group or whoever, our uh, staffing levels and where we cut and where we make uh, changes to. That's all I was pointing out. Um, I'm just pleased at the moment that we are now recruited and we've got um, a more a more staff to deal with these issues. That's all I was pointing out. I'm sorry yeah. if it's upset uh, Councillor Adams. I apologise for that. Okay. Okay. Apology Thank accepted. you very much. Can we go back to the yeah? Can we go back to the, the debate and the issue then? Um, I don't see any further hands up hands up at all from members. I don't know whether we need, need any further clarification. The only um, uh, Mr. Powell, sorry, you you have your hand up. You want to come back? 
Yeah, I, I just wanted to come to, uh, uh, comment on. I think it was Councillor Ridgewell possibly um, suggested that members may feel a bit impotent in terms of the decision process for this application. Um, whilst we as officers have recommended approval of this application because we've balanced up the uh, the merits and the um, impacts of the development and we feel that it's acceptable in planning terms. That doesn't prevent members from determining the application as they see fit and if that they see fit to refuse the application then they should do so. However, what I would advise members is to ensure that they only do so for valid planning reasons relevant to this application um, and not to any other uh, issues that are ongoing at that at this site. Um, notwithstanding that, uh, it was also mentioned about cumulative impact of developments on this site. And yes, we do seem to have an application for this site every three to six months. Uh, that's within the gift of the applicant to make these applications and we have to determine them on their merits Merit. for that particular application. However, issues such as uh, dust impacts and noise impacts are considered on an accumulative impact basis. So, um, and Maria could probably provide more information on this, but noise in particular would be considered on the basis of what is the existing background level noise and what would the proposed development increase that by? And if it increases it by more than an acceptable level, as set out in guidance, then the development is unacceptable. Uh, so whilst we can consider this application on its own merits, we do also consider the cumulative impacts of all of the developments on this site in certain respects, such as noise impacts or perhaps dust, dust impacts and things like that. So uh, that's just for information for members so that they, they are aware that these issues are considered but as I say, please consider this application on its merits and um, on the basis of the, the recommendation before them and the discussions today. Thank you, Mr. Powell. I'm sure members will do that and take note. Um, come to John Ridgewell. I think Carwin's statement prompts a response, and I imagine he'd expect to have one too. But uh, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, uh, uh, for, for complete clarity, I, I, I will certainly be taking his advice uh, in terms of making an assessment on 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 this particular individual item alone. But but you have referenced uh, in in your statement just now that that um, that as as a planning authority, you also look at uh, at the um the previous track record and and i and, and I, i'm pleased that that is the case because I, because that is a matter of concern and i've expressed my views on that quite strongly already um but the problem about my statement or what the view i have about my statement about impotency is the fact that um whilst you make an assessment of, of the cumulative effects the assessment uh, that i might make and the assessment made by the general public is very different you know they have a very different view on it uh, and our role here is to represent them, but also to understand and empathise with them. And I think that's the degree of frustration that I feel, and I suspect is shared by a lot of members here tonight, mm -hmm. in that um, you have perhaps the benefit of having a rule book you can go and look at and, and guide you. We we don't, you know, we, we just have to make a decision on the basis of the advice you give and our own personal views. So so therein lies part of the frustration. Um, I'll say no more on that, Carwin, but um, it is a response and I feel it was justified. I hope you appreciate that. It looks as if you want to come back in on that, Carwin. Your hand <laughs> no, 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 uh, totally accept what you're saying, Councillor Ridgewell. Um, just to, uh, to clarify one point, uh, we consider some cumulative impacts, such as, as I say, noise and things like that, but we cannot consider the track record of an applicant in determining an application. Just because they have failed to, or may have failed to, just to, to comply with conditions previously, we cannot hold that against them in determining this application. To do so would be inappropriate. And if we were to, to refuse the application on that basis, uh, if it went to appeal, I would suggest we would have costs awarded against us. Um, however, and as has as Councillor Ridgewell has, has quite rightly alluded to, uh, officers make a balance on an application and things such as uh, landscape impacts or visual impacts um, are so, uh, more often than not uh, subjective opinion and if members and or residents have a different view to officers it is within their gift to make a decision which is different to ours um, but I would suggest that they be careful about doing so in respect of technical matters which are covered by uh, guidance and legislation such as noise or things like that because if it meets specific targets or specific guidance 
it is difficult to defend refusals on that basis. Um, so members need to be careful as to which reasons for refusal they choose if they do they are minded to do so today. Thank you, Carwin. Um, I don't have any indication from any other member at the moment. Um, the only uh, motion that's been put to council to, to the committee at the moment is by Councillor Bevan, which was um, for refusal. Um, that hasn't been seconded. So um, um, the the other recommendation comes from um, the officers, which is for uh, the matter um, to be deferred um, and to allow the applicant to enter into Section One agreement. Um, members, the and, and for permission to be granted. Um, uh, members, it's up to you now as to as to which way you want to go on on, on this issue. Um, I'm looking for. A motion from from you tonight um, for a decision. Is anybody prepared to second Councillor um, Bevan's motion? Um, if not, um, is anybody prepared to move? Uh, Chair, I will second Councillor Bevan. You're going to second Councillor Bevan. Thank you, Councillor Davis. So the the notice before us is for refusal. Um, uh, I would ask. Um, First of all, for the the reasons that we we can consider for refusal, um, and if those reasons can be justified, um, and as such, then then we can go for deferment on it for those reasons to be considered by officers and brought back to committee. So um, before we go any further, Councillor Ridgewell, you've still got your hand up. Is there anything you want for on clarification? Um. Chair, you've, you've, we have a motion that's been seconded, um, and I, I think you're asking us for reasons for refusal. Uh, well, am I correct? that would be the case. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. Fine. Well, well, I think that that, that given given the motion is, is is now in front of us, um, I, I think that the, the the issues raised by Mr. Williams, in particular, in terms of um, the paucity of information that we have so far about the um, a, a number of the, of the key issues regarding this um, should be the key reason why we uh, at this juncture um, support that motion or, 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 or not. So um, I can't remember off the top of my head precisely all the points that, that Mr Williams made. Um, I made a few notes but not inadequately enough I think for this but um, he made a strong argument that there were a, a number of areas where, um, in his view, and I believe he's a professional uh, professional uh, officer, um, uh, there were a number of areas where we didn't have all the facts to hand. Uh, and I think the, the refusal should be granted for uh, on the basis of the fact that we need to have more further information uh, um, at this juncture. It's a bit windy that, I don't know, but if that's going to be OK, if you can make something out of that. Um, Mr Thomas, can you clarify? Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I note um, you know, the comments in that respect in terms of um, the view that there is insufficient information um, regarding the impacts. Quite clearly, the, the quarry is operating, um, so this permission seeks consent effectively to extend the time that that can operate. So I think we're clearly aware of, of the impacts of the scheme. Um, and um, I think that uh, and a reason for refusal is based on the fact that um, there's a perception there's insufficient information. I don't think would um, could be defended. We'd have to identify what those impacts are. So, you know, um, comment was made earlier about the cumulative impact of uh, of the noise dust and sort of air quality in the area. Um, and um, and references also be made in terms of the, the the need for the mineral in terms of balancing those impacts. Um, so uh, that th those sort of areas could be the I, th I think could be the only only basis on which uh, um, any any objections really could be raised in terms of the, of the development. The fact that um, that there's insufficient information in in isolation is not sufficient to base to, to, to form a reason for refusal and, and, and officers would need I think further clarity from members in terms of what the material issues of concern they have um, um, in that respect. Okay thank you Ryan. Um, Councillor Adams. 
Thank you, Chair. There is a bit of information for us into the areas of the conditions that would be of the 31 conditions. Uh, I think it was 12 being quoted as having to wait up to three months for the results of further studies and blah, 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 whatever. Uh, one of them actually said six months um, and a number didn't actually say how long this would take or be available to members to make the decision. So that information is available. I think we were given that from uh, Councillor Wynn David in an email earlier, uh, actually numbering the paragraphs and conditions that weren't substantial enough for us to give a result tonight. Um, and I think that's what we're talking about there. We want the immediate information, not information in the future after possibly approving this application. OK, o hopefully that helps. Ryan, um, would you like to just comment on that first before I fetch in a number of other speakers? Yeah, yeah. again, it goes back to the same point. I mean, we need to understand uh, and members need to articulate what the impacts they're concerned about. What are we concerned about here in material planning terms? See, it's, it's not sufficient to say we don't think we've got enough information. Um, but what are what are members' concerns in terms of the, in, in in planning terms, in terms of the, the, the impacts? That's what we need to. Uh, which which is the point I made at the beginning of the debate. In actual fact, um, can, uh, Mr. Thomas, if if we are going to judge this, it has to be on on material planning uh, reasons. Um, Councillor Aldworth, I'll fetch you in first. I, I've also got Councillor Ridgewell's hand still up, but uh, I'll, I'll fetch you in first because you haven't spoken yet. Um, um, Councillor Aldworth. Right. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, yes, I'm, I'm going back to what the local member Carmen Bezina said and reminded us that the COP conference is going on in the UK as we speak. And um, the idea that tonight this committee is being asked for advance permission for extraction over 24 years is a bit of a neck by Bryn to ask us to commit to this. Um, you know, I think things could alter in the very near future, um, you know, with regulations such as quarrying and other disturbances to the earth, that you know, this really isn't uh, appropriate that we should be uh, granting this kind of duration that's going to affect the unborn in this area. So I think on planning grounds that the, you know, for us to agree to 24 years of um, extraction, six phases, and then seven years after that to put the restoration in order i i think it, it it's a big ask and and not fair thank you thank you councillor aldworth uh, we'll go back to you now then councillor ridgewell and then i'll fetch mr thomas in afterwards again yeah, yeah just, just 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 quickly uh, yeah, as i say I, I didn't make a record or uh, uh, admit, make a note of, of the key details that, that were raised by mr williams but but a number of them i think would be appropriate in terms of justifying why we might choose to refuse um just for complete clarity I, i'm not sure um whether mr thomas was saying something contrary to, to the advice i had from the other planning officer um in that the, the cumulative the accumulative effect of this could be used as a reason for refusal. My understanding when Carwin spoke to me was that that really shouldn't be considered. And I'm not sure if if, if Ryan can just clarify that, because I, I, I thought he said that may be a reason why a, a bit of clarity on that would be useful for me, if that's OK. OK, Ryan. Yeah, I think uh, um, Karen Powell, what Karen Powell indicated was that we would take into account the cumulative impact of each 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 of the developments on the site. When we consider the effects so obviously um, we wouldn't consider each so for example noise there are four or five separate uh, or four separate uses on this site each of which would generate noise um so we would take into account then the cumulative impact of that noise from the from the separate we wouldn't just look at it in isolation but uh, i mean i think it would be legitimate to 
to take into account the 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 effect of noise, dust, air quality cumulatively on on the local community. Um, that would be um, uh, reasonable to do so, I, I, I believe. Although based upon the information in the report, quite clearly the impacts are not you know, are well short of of statutory um, sort of requirements. So the well under the sort of limit set on the site. Um, but yes, I mean you could take that into account. Um, and I think just to go back on what Councillor Allworth indicated earlier, um, you know what what has been sought is um, an extension, effectively, in terms of the 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 the, the time for quarrying operations. Uh, and, and obviously, what Councillor Aldworth is indicating was that you know that that extension in the current um, in current climate perhaps is not justified, given the impacts on uh, potential impacts on the community. So uh, that's what I took from from those comments. Thank you, Ryan. Um, uh, Councillor Aldworth, you still have your hand up. Is is that's the legacy hand? Is it, or did you want to come back? No, it is. I'll, I'll remove it now, Chair. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Mike Davis, you've come. Yeah. Your hand thank you, thank you, Chair. I, I yeah. understand where uh, Mr. Thomas is coming from on what we have to be careful, what we refuse planning on. Mm -hmm. But um, when we was. Uh, at the start of this presentation, when we were shown the maps, this is just isn't just um, I feel a little extension. This is huge, and uh, over uh, as Liz Oldworth said, you know it's 24 years. And when you look at, uh, I'm concerned about the health safety, health and safety. Although it's been mentioned that uh, we can't go back on uh, track records, uh, the dust, uh, you know, the outlook. You know, and when we look at, uh, at the well-being, which uh, is so important uh, in this time uh, of our lives, I mean, uh, the quality of life in this area, I feel, is being eroded. Uh, I, I, I mean, this is uh, a, a massive. And what I'd like to uh, ask, um, Chair, is um, it always used to be that uh, when we as a committee wanted to refuse a planning application, it was always stated that uh, it uh, would come back for reasons, the officers to come back for reasons for refusal. So are the officers telling me that they can't come back with a reason for refusal? I, I think where, where we are with this, uh, Councillor Davis, is, is that if you are choosing to refuse it, you must have a reason of your own to refuse it. And officers will judge that reason as to whether or not it would be acceptable. Um, otherwise, um, you, you're, you're making a decision without justification. OK, then, Chair, well, in that case, I think that um, the health and safety and uh, well-being and the, uh, uh, the extension is just too great. I don't know if that helps uh, me at all or the um, uh, other people against this uh, application perhaps mr thomas can let me know okay okay and he has he has got his hand up to come back in again right okay th thank you chair i think um you know based upon the, the the discussion here we're talking about um the impact upon the 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 well-being of of the community um as a result and continuation of of quarrying operations um oh. you know, in the future and members concerns on that basis so that that could form um, um a basis upon which we could consider a potential reason for if it was only right comes comes to davis we would then bring back a uh, a report next uh, next cycle identifying whether or not we felt that that reason for if it was all, um could be um uh, sustained at appeal and whether it would expose us to to costs uh, but also articulating that in a in a in a form um, which would would which would um, represent a, a, a valid reason for refusal, set in policy context. So, if members are uh, if members' concerns are, are related to uh, of the vote in that way, in that um, they consider the continuation of uh, of the quarrying operations um, uh, granted by this this permission would have an unacceptable impact upon. Um, uh, the well-being of the local community by, by virtue of, of um, its various impacts, then, then we can bring back a reason on that basis. 
but I would say that. Uh, so, sorry, chair, you're 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 on. But I, I would say, yeah, yeah, just just to just to round that that round that off. Yeah, I know from an officer's perspective, uh, you know, based upon um, uh, the content of the, the report uh, and the, the monitoring um, uh, and the the uh, statistics we have before us. Uh, the impacts are not sufficient to justify a reason reason for refusal on that basis. But it's smart for members um, to consider that. Okay, um, Mike Davis, you've got, Councillor Mike Davis, you still got your hand up. Uh, did you want to come back in? No, it's been taken down. No, okay, no then, chair, it was uh, an old one. Sorry, chair. Like, okay, thank you, Councillor Davis. Um, Councillor Mike Adams, and then Councillor John Ridgewell again. Thank you, Chair. I'm just going to ask uh, Ryan or any of the officers, what is the current time span that we have for them to carry on quarrying? Uh, what was the limit the last time that uh, this came up? Until when? Thanks. OK. Um, does somebody want to come back in with, with a response to that? Or can I, I'll call Councillor Ridgewell in first. And perhaps uh, if somebody's got an answer to that, they can br they can bring it forward. Councillor John Ridgewell. Oh, thank you, thank you, Chair. Yes, um, just just quickly, I, I, it seems to me that 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 um, that Ryan's come back with 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 a reason which we could use. But I, but I wonder whether, in fact, he used the term continuation of quarrying. I think from my view, it's a significant expansion of the quarrying, which is a, a alarming. Um, you know, were it just continuing along, then that perhaps wouldn't be the same issue. But looking at the plans, looking at the maps and hearing what I've been told, it looks as though we're doubling the size of that quarry over over a period of time. So I see that 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 that, that is a significant factor. And I think if we could use the, 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 the term significant expansion within our reasons for refusal, I think that that might um, at least point everybody in the direction of how we generally feel about it. Thank you, Councillor Ridgewell. Um, Councillor Hussey, you've indicated. Yeah, thank, you, come in. thank you, Chair. Um, just a um, bit of clarification. Uh, what would happen if uh, Councillor Bevan withdrew his, um, his motion and it just went to a straight vote and, it, and the application was refused? Would we still have to make um, uh, reasons for refusal? As far as I'm aware, you certainly must, yes. I mean, it, it has to be either accepted or rejected on planning conditions and, and planning reasons. And and um, we just can't turn anything down without justification. OK, thank you, Chair. OK, so, so um, nobody has indicated anything further. So I think um, we can now um, go to a vote on this and the, the vote is is for this matter to refer to be referred back for reasons for refusal and members have outlined those reasons. Um, so shall we take a vote on that? That's those in in favour of deferral for reasons of refusal. Um, can we have uh, the vote in slip up, please, Rebecca? So for clarification, if you are voting yes, it means you are voting for um, the matter to be deferred to, and to be brought back to the next committee meeting for reasons for refusal. You can just give a few minutes for the committee services to clarify the outcome of the vote. Just checking after you now, Chair, to give me one moment. Thank you.
Chair, I can confirm that the vote is in order and you have nine yes, zero no and one abstention. So that motion is carried, Chair. OK, thank you very much, Rebecca. Um, so now we move on to agenda item four, which is land at the former Pont and Price House Blackwood. It's application number 210585. RM um, pages 37 to 64 and the case officer is Justin Waite. Justin, okay, would you like I'm to make a now. presentation? Okay, thank you, Councillor Adams. Chair, so am I. Thank you. Um, thank you Chair, very much, Councillor Ridgewell. Councillor Miles needs to rejoin the meeting. Yes, will somebody call her back in, please? Yes, yes, yes Chair. I'm back in, thanks. Thank you, Chair. I'm just, uh, yeah. up uh, can I introduce you? Uh, first of all, um, Justin, you're, you're new members of the team, welcome aboard. Um, sorry you had to keep waiting so long to make this presentation, but uh, we're in your hands now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair, and thank you for the welcome. It's uh, much appreciated. I'm hopefully sharing the presentation. Is it showing on the screen there for everybody? Yes, it is. Yes. OK, then I'll start. OK, this application, it seeks approval uh, of the reserve matters relating to the outline planning permission for up to 125 residential units on the land of the former council offices at Blackwood Road, Pont and Fryth. Uh, members will hopefully recall that uh, outline planning permission was granted in April this year, um, establishing the principle of residential development on the site itself. And the application is now considering the, the detailed uh, matters relating to access, layout, scale, appearance and landscaping. In addition, the applicant is also uh, seeking to discharge a number of conditions that were imposed on the outline planning permission. And you'll see on the slide there, those conditions are referenced uh, at the bottom. So turning to the site layout, um, I'll just run through some of the main elements of the scheme. Uh, in terms of the access into the site, uh, hopefully you can see my cursor moving. Yeah. Uh, the main access will come in off the existing roundabout off Blackwood Road. There's no proposed changes to the access there. And I think it outlined uh, planning permission. Uh, the, 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 the detailed number of trips and so on was uh, assessed uh, for the proposed residential development. And the surrounding highway network and, these, and this junction was found to be uh, acceptable and had the capacity to take the proposed development. In terms of Blackwood uh, Road itself, uh, there's two blocks of terraces uh, just there and there and a, a prominent corner building uh, with a dual aspect to give a focal point, um, giving a good uh, and strong active frontage on the Blackwood Road and as I said, a focal point as you come into the site. Within the site itself, um, there's a, a listed war memorial uh, which is located here and that's a, obviously a key feature that is retained on site. And there is a, a formal uh, set of uh, soft and hard landscaping to uh, to to obviously uh, protect and enhance that set in there. Uh, another key aspect is an area of open space uh, in the middle of the site, and an additional area of open space towards the uh, the northeastern corner of the site. Uh, the houses themselves um, they front onto the the main streets within the site, and they also front onto uh, the uh, registered public right of way, which runs along the southern boundary of the site, and also, as you'll see up in the, uh, the northern corner here, fronting on to uh, footpath links uh, into the uh, Sir Harold Finch Memorial Park, uh, which is located to the north of the site. Uh, one of the key features of the layout itself is this uh, linkage, then visual linkage, really, between uh, this this area of open space, the central park within the site, and also the uh, the, the the listed uh, memorial there, mm -hmm. and there'll be a sort of landscape avenue uh, between the two, um, enhancing that uh, visual connection. There, I should also probably highlight that the areas of open space they're, they're multifunctional. Um, obviously, they have visual benefits in terms of their visual amenity. They will also have. Uh, 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 recreational uh, provision um, in the form of uh, uh, provision for children and they have the, the function as well of acting as uh, sustainable drainage um, which has previously uh, been approved uh, as a required a separate uh, SEDS uh, approval process.
from uh, from the relevant body there. So just moving on to um, some photos of the site, um, just to obviously bring you back up to speed with with the context there. Um, this this is looking towards the north. So you can see the war memorial there, just on the left hand side. And just on the right hand side there, you'll see the, the previous site of the demolished uh, council office building. Uh, just to the left up there, that's the entrance into the site itself. Uh, this photo here, this is looking uh, towards the west, the war memorial, and obviously Blackwood Road is there. And again, just in the foreground there, we have the, the, the Brownfield site of the, of the demolished council offices. Uh, this is looking at the uh, the public right of way, which runs along the southern boundary. Uh, that is being enhanced as part of the proposed development and improvements have been secured in respect of that right of way there. And they're also, I should say quickly, um, a number of linkages uh, proposed from the residential development onto that, uh, onto that footpath, again, giving good access and connectivity to the surrounding area. Uh, this photo here, this is looking to, I think, the north eastern corner. Um, you can see the existing co council car park and so the area of, of more green uh, greenfield land there. Um, and I think in the far corner there, this, that's where one of these public open space will be. And that will have, as I indicated earlier, a sustain, sustainable drainage provision. And again, this is this is a similar photo with more of a close up looking towards that area. On this photo here, this is looking north. Um, there's an existing footpath uh, shown there, which leads to the Sir Harold Finch Memorial Park. That is being retained as part of the proposed development. And this photo here is again looking north. Um, you'll see the existing footpath just here, which again is being retained, um, obviously uh, allowing that connectivity to the surrounding uh, area. This area, existing area, uh, or this existing playground, I should say, is obviously being removed as part of the development, but there is replacement uh, playground, which is currently under construction uh, just off Blackwood Road, um, not far from the site, and it also uh, remains accessible there. This uh, site photo is just looking uh, towards the south, um, again, from the car, existing car park or previous car park, and you can see where the council building was there since it's been demolished and again another photo looking south and if you just in just at the background there that's where the artist comes into the site and I think you'll just see the the memorial there as well um focusing on the, the the memorial obviously it's a listed listed building and one of the key considerations is is it set in to to um to, to obviously preserve this um just behind the war memorial there's going to be what is uh, described as and proposed as these arms houses which is this building here i'll just scroll down this partially the, the war memorial sits around here i'll show you another photo so, th so this building partially in encloses it to some extent just to the rear of the war memorial but as i indicated earlier there will be soft and hard landscaping to, to separate the two to some extent and give it a formal setting. And this visualization here um, obviously gives a good indication of how that will that will look. In terms of the proposed houses themselves, there are a variety of designs which are proposed. Uh, they're all within the arts and crafts style, as they're described by the applicant. They're generally a mixture of uh, rough cast white render and red brick. You have the, the grey uh, roof tile um, with the terracotta ridge. They te also tend to have uh, chimneys, fake chimneys on them, um, which adds to the, the roofscape and the visual interest. And they typically have uh, band horizontal band courses of brickwork to, ha to add visual interest. And also you can see banding of brick above the, above the windows, the fenestration there. Uh, the houses themselves are uh, primarily uh, two stories in height, um, which is in keeping with the uh, surrounding area, the character. The only difference, there's bungalow proposed, which is obviously single story. And I showed you the arms house um, earlier on in the presentation. Here's another uh, example of some of the buildings some of the proposed houses. And one of the, the key things about them, as you can see, they have uh, dual aspects. Um, so obviously on, on on corners and so on, you get a good active frontage as you as you turn turn around the street there. 
Uh, I should probably have said in terms of um, uh, just going back quickly to, to, to parking and so on, um, the parking proposed for these houses as well um, and all the uh, highways, internal highways, is, is being considered acceptable um, by the transport engineering manager meeting the policies and meeting the requirements of our supplementary planning guidance so all of the houses will be adequately served individual accesses and car parking provision um, just moving on then to uh, the play areas in a little bit more detail this slide focuses in on them again you can see the main uh, area of open space there that that, that central park and then this area as well Add into uh, add add into the amount of public space available within the site, and as you'll see as well, the houses are all overlooking these areas of public open space there, which again, you know, improves surveillance um, and and makes them safe, you know, accessible uh, places within the development itself. I'll just um, show you some indic indicative examples of natural play equipment. Um, that is being proposed. These details are not being secured as part of this application, but can, will subsequently be secured. But these are some examples of the natural play equipment that will be provided within the site itself. So I won't keep you any longer. I'll probably just um, finally indicate that you know the recommendation is to grant approval of the reserved matters subject to 15 conditions, which are within the report itself. Um, I would just like to highlight that um, condition five needs to be slightly amended, um, nothing significant. All it is is in relation to the timing of the submission and approval of the highways details. I think the current condition refers to the timing being in relation to the uh, construction of development. That, that condition would just like to tweak it slightly so it relates to the occupation of the development in terms of timing rather than the construction of development. So I'll stop there, Chair, and obviously I'm happy to answer any questions. I'll hand back over. Thank you very much, Justin, for that presentation. Very enlightening. Um, uh, and uh, from my own point of view, uh, before we go into debate, I, I'd just like to say how, how thrilled and excited I am with this development. Um, it's, it's, it's this sort of development is long overdue. Um, and I think it, it must be emphasised that, that this does not in any way encroach on Harold Finch Memorial Park. And from my own contact with Harold Finch, because uh, I did campaign for him many years ago in my youth, I think Harold Finch would have been delighted to have seen this estate um, from his own dedicated area of ground. Um, and I think it's, it's something that we should be looking for in the future uh, in many other parts of the borough. So thanks for that presentation, Justin. Um, I'll move on from there to Councillor Dix. Um, uh, I'm just, uh, I see that your hand is up for comment. Yep, yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Just a point of clarification, if I could. I, uh, can we, was the applicant, is it Pobble? Yes, po Pobble, yes. Okay, I work for Pobble. Um, no, I don't work in anywhere in, um, sort of uh, the construction side of it, anything like that. I work as a support worker with um, vulnerable people uh, who I support to stop them from being homeless. I just wondered if uh, Mr. Trant could give me some advice whether I should take yeah. part in this tonight. Mr. Trant, because my, uh, I'm employed by Pobble. I, I work for floating support. I do. I work in the community supporting vulnerable people. Yes, if, if, if I could assist there then. Um, if you work for um, Pobble, then you certainly need uh, to declare that uh, as a, a as a personal interest, and you then need to consider whether that personal interest would also be prejudicial. And the test would be: Would a member of the public, knowing that you work for Pobble, um, consider that you were still able to act in the public interest on this application, and that your private interest, if you like, i.e. your employment with Pobble, does not have any effect. Um, my advice to you, uh, it is your decision though, Councillor Dix, my advice to you in these circumstances are that if you work for Pobble and Pobble is the applicant, then I would declare a personal and a prejudicial interest and I would leave the meeting. Now, I know you said that you're not directly affected 
or, or you're not directly involved in the development arm, if you like, of Pobble. But at the end of the day, you still are employed by Pobble. So I would declare a personal and prejudicial interest there. Um, that would be my advice to you. But of course, uh, it is your call in matters like this. I hope Thank that you. assists. Thank you. Yeah, th uh, thank you, Robert. I think I'll take your advice in this case and uh, declare a, a personal prejudicial interest. I think that's that. The, it's it's clear then that I haven't been influenced or tried to influence anything at all, and uh, yeah. and the, the public need that that sort of uh, uh, reassurance. I think yeah. Yeah. prevent any challenge in the future on it. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you very much for yeah. that, Councillor Dix. Um, thank you, Chair. So thank you, Robert. Early tea for you then. Right. Thank you. Um, I, I can't see any other hand upon this um, application. Um, does anybody with the, the recommendation is that permission be granted subject to conditions? And there is that, as we've already been noted, a slight um, amendment to condition five. Oh, now the hands are shooting up. Uh, Councillor John Taylor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm happy to move the officer's recommendations with that slight amendment to condition five. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Uh, Councillor Hussey? Councillor Hussey? I think he's trying to get in. Yes. Yes. Sorry, Jay. Yeah, I'd, okay. I'd, like, I'd like to second that. Um, I did bring it up at um, the original planning meeting. It would be nice if uh, Sarah Finch was somehow named in the development. I know it had a planning concern, but uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to. Uh, a second. Well, I think he'd be looking down on this with pride anyway, uh, yeah. Councillor Hussey. Yeah, uh, sure. Okay. Uh, Councillor John Bevan. Thank you, Chair. I, I, I support the application. I think it will be excellent to have more housing built in Caffilly County Borough Council. But it's a pity they weren't at the northern end, Chairman. Thank you very much. <laughs> I expected that comment from you, John. Thank you very much indeed. OK, I'm sure it'll be noted. Right, so it, it's been moved. Um, I believe it was seconded, wasn't it? Um, so uh, if there's no further questioning on this, I think we can put it straight to the vote. So, uh, Rebecca, could you put the, the vote in slip up for us, please? Councillor Hussey, your hand is still up. Did, did you want to come in before the vote? Oh, no, that's OK. OK, the voting slip is there, so please enter yes if you're in agreement that permission be granted, no if you don't, and abst an, an abstention space is there for you as well. So please vote now and press on whichever is your choice and then press on submit. We we'll wait a few moments for Rebecca to come back with the outcome of the vote. Thanks, Chair. Um, the vote is in order and that's unanimous with nine votes for, Chair, so that's carried. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Thank you very much, members, uh, for your involvement tonight and taking part in, in the debate. Um, I wish you all a very good night um, and we'll see you next week uh, with another round of planning meetings. Thank you very much. Good night, Thanks, Chair. Chair. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Good, good night. night. Good night, Roy. Good night, all the best. Good night, all.